it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. And I was just saying that I was going to read something different to you tonight. And then I came in and I heard the end of your discussion of the long poem. I had decided that I was going to read a long poem, but I have also written um, sequential poems. And so th the long poem that I was going to read is in Point No Point. And it's a poem about my father and the house that burned down and the new house that my husband and I built at Point No Point. But what I decided to read to you instead, and I hope I've chosen well, <laughs> is a sequential poem called Act of Pass, which is from the book Act of Pass that uh, Peddler Press released last year. This is a, a poem that's named after the strait um, between, well, when the ferry crosses from Tawasson to Swartz Bay on Vancouver Island, it goes through Act of Pass, which is a narrow strait where the currents are dangerous, vessels must change course, and this just seemed like a good metaphor for the kind of things that I was going through in midlife. So this sequence of poems, are they are 21 guzzles, and oh, I don't want to keep knocking that. Can you hear me all right if I stand back this far? Okay. Um, these are poems that are individual poems, but they work as a linked sequence. And they're guzzles, so that the relationship uh, between the verses is clandestine. The links are more like the links in haiku or in linked renga. Um, anyway, I'll just read them to you. We live where night seeps straight down wine on the wicks of stars. A rock carved by waves and warmed by sun that's easy to sit in. A lap, a body to lean on. I'm a little deafened by the constant breaking of the ocean. Change, change, change. But what has it learned? Throwing itself against stones rounding them up, scotch bottle broken and rolling. My father softened as beach glass, ground down. The doe's head points away from the road. Dying, she surged out of herself, aiming for the bush. Two ravens hopping on gravel scold me, Jogging past daily, I track her disintegration. My father in my arms, remarkably heavy. I thought ashes were light. The first day, her head is intact. Eyelashes. The ravens are bloodying her, but she still has fullness. No hot flashes but I freeze. Yesterday, gloves for typing. Yes, in July, no kidding. They unwrap her chest and hips. Her middle is hollow. Long white thigh bones. Socks of fur. Drawing salary out of hours. Fur combed from a mongrel's back, carded, spun. Emergency road service wedged open a window, fed in a tape with a Velcro loop, caught the lock. Ambulance driver gave me a quarter and a phone number, searching for my notes in the elevator. Lesson time. Why did I lose touch? My drive, my keys, my mobility, my wits. The quietness of creatures sizing up danger. Could I hold that still? Even when I shed work, its presence clings. Dog loyal, that's it. Protected by my stinking sweater. There's a reference in there that I, I perhaps need to explain. 
Um, the Cowichan women have for a long time woven Cowichan wool or spun Cowichan wool um, with dog hair to make the Cowichan sweaters, which are, um, they were worn by my family members and they were um, waterproof, or at least almost waterproof, but my father always said you could smell the dog when they got wet. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, at the bottom of the well, a hermit crab. The object he gave me, a turtle's carapace. When I asked him what to do, he said, it's not a job problem, it's a Sturm und Drang problem. House on my back neck out, gunnery practice across the strait, thuds at the pace of heartbeats. What I want now is not what a woman wants from a man. I want what an egg wants from its DNA. I want this with all the greed of a grub. Mistress quickly feeling Falstaff's feet, Hal on horseback. I know you not. Myself, a shock and a betrayal. I fight exhaustion all week. In Oporto, we ate quail's eggs, tiny speckled sepia orbs. I wore a red shirt. Ale and laughter in the tap room below. Well, dear, goodbye for now. My father's last words to me. The man interred not only in my DNA, but in my turn of phrase, my taste, and my dark hair. It turned wavy, long and thick when I was pregnant, pushing a stroller in a sage jumpsuit. Waiting for the phone to ring, jelly bag hung in the doorway, full of crushed blueberries. Like a soul between lifetimes, unreincarnated, afloat on radio waves, a river of piano notes. The Big Bang's a bust, says an expert on ideas. No call, not shortlisted, not wanted locally. Even my bedding plants won't grow. Thumb-high marigolds, minute snapdragons. The indigo of mussel shells, salal berries, Stellar's jays drumming on the metallic handles of the wheelbarrow. Fall rye sewn across a new septic field, flash of blue against sword ferns. So I'm cast to the birds, flicker on a spruce lifting scabs of bark, its head a fierce drill. Perhaps I should also say that this, this sequence of poems was written about a period in my life when I first moved out, away from Vancouver to Vancouver Island where I was living at Point No Point and I was commuting between Vancouver and Vancouver Island because I was still teaching um, in the Vancouver area and living on the island. So there was a lot of ferry traffic in yeah. that year in particular. That went on for a number of years. But it was also a time when both my parents had died, my father most recently, and I was grieving for him, and I was smack in the middle of a brutal menop menopause. And it, there was a whole lot of midlife stuff going on, um, much of which, which gets reflected in these poems. Sturgeon unchanged for three million years, washed up. A giant's white slippers tangled in low branches. Gilled di dinosaurs surviving ice age, continental drift, grizzlies. We've slain the giant, turned its river into a drain. Already the wired, tired state. One day back and I'm into it, sleep the water my mind leapfrogs. I remember deep sedge, waving willows, stream's edge, dreaming. 
Ghosts in the river, the radio called them. Marking time. 19 hour days. Swirling hallways. Deciduous names. My father's doctor shook hands. Pneumonia, friend of the elderly. Told us he'd met an easy death. The mice made a nest of moss in the woodpile. It looked like a muff, big enough for two hands. I pleaded for a muff like Katrina's. <laughs> when, when nobody's moving, when everybody's wrapped, <clears throat> listening to you, the lights go up because they're in motion detectors. So when they're bored and the lights stay on the whole time, it's not a good thing. Okay, that was, that was exciting. <laughs> I pleaded for a muff like Katrina's, the storybook skaters. No siree, my mother said. Your hands would be stuck. In intensive care, they paralyzed her. She was fighting the respirator. Stroking her forehead and singing, Skeeter's am a humming and there's a long, long trail a winding. If only I could have held his hand. Hers puffed up, but the touch, our touch, lasts. The kitchen has a built-in ironing board and copper pennies dropped by former tenants between the stove and fridge. I circulate in hallways, mailbox, laundry, garbage. Fairies split the week, nights in a pumpkin shell. Where would I wander? Now all I crave is solitude. Alarm clocks ring, radiators percolate, the building hums, a dryer turns over its load. Residents, towels, shorts, city blocks under unsorted clouds. I carve a jack-o'-lantern, strings of slimy goop laden with seeds like false fingernails. My arm sticky, to the elbow. A boogeyman's bagged me in a tar pungent sack. He ups his pace. I'm thump thumping against his back. Don't let your imagination run away with you, she warned, as if I'd chosen. On the ferry, I see a white haired woman and cry. All my wise ones, my contradictors, have died. A racket on the beach, stones losing every edge, pebbles sucked up, flung down, Sunday's sighs, the week's urgent attack, bursting file folders, cuticles torn, coffee beans in the glove compartment, waking in hot water. I thought his death would be easier than hers. Switchbacks, vista east, coming over the Malahat. Row of peaks across the water, then a grid of vines. She lifts the glass pipette from a carafe and slips one amber drop onto the back of my hand. I expect a blessing, preserve you in eternal life. Suck it up while noticing my knuckles. A vintage boiled, evaporated, casked, bottled. Residue of champagne, now vinegar. Driving the twisting road home, my mouth an echo chamber for bitter ethers. Where the grounds disturbed orange fungus, mouths of goldfish, puckered lips. Chain of paper dolls, linked like mushrooms. I've cut a folding stack, myself, a history. She lectured me, you'll never be beautiful, but you can always be nice. I recall human fat, pale, dimpled, in a jar on a shelf in St. Paul's Hospital. So what's left to eat? Iceberg lettuce? Death's keel, my stabilizer. 
Men don't ache like this. <coughs> don't tighten wires lumbar to sacrum, clench hips and pubis. Bull kelp, the fastest growing annual, pumps out 40 meters in six months. Hold fast, stipe, blades, spores. Loops of the straits intestines heaped on the beach. Ashes and seaweed to the compost. His whistle. On board, the tinned salmon sandwich tastes of margarine. A jet stream nicknamed the Pineapple Express. Boxcars of Lowe's, progesterone, estrogen, FSH. My hands are changing. No more blank skin. Palms cross-hatched, cross veins bulging, fingers flushed or withered. Weeknights I eat crackers and cheese and drink Chilean wine. Fall asleep in blue sheets faded from many washings. Another funeral today. My model couple slips away across the galaxy in a lightning. They tent on island shores along the Milky Way. To keep exhaustion at bay, I make eye contact. Into old age, those two climbed a new peak each year. Our gray cat noses open the cellar door, hung from his jaw a bunny, brown, floppy. When he eats shrews, he crunches their small bones and purrs, then hunkers on my lap. Warm, snoozing creature beneath the newspaper. Its headline, Rwanda's Gory History. A man on a rock hound harrows the meadow, gathering stones from Earth's larder. I grew up in an unfinished house, learning to brace against hammering, holding walls in place gum erasers and tracing paper, great T-square on a green drawing board. In the end, he overflowed allocated space, broke chairs. Now I have a huge investment in death. Since him nested in my mother, the jar of his ashes we placed in her grave. His snores scratched glasses Scientific American, crosswords, rhododendron blooms. I forgot my clothes. No suitcase, no skirt, no sweater. No power this morning, bleeding but no excuse. Mind like a pussy willow, texture of a catkin. Yesterday, gray nubbins engorged raindrops. Swags of mist drifting in and out of the forest. There were years when I couldn't shower alone, carried babies front and back. Now I study stones, how old they are, how sleek and round. Off to the second-hand store, off with jeans I've worn for three days. Get me spring colors. Shua tells the cops, if you shoot him, do it with his shirt on. They'd followed him to her shack. They figured they had him cornered. He'd come at me with an ice pick, but even in handcuffs, he's sweet-talking her. They're both in the all together, she with one breast longer than the other. She swathes herself in a bolt of white tulle. He slips his shirt on. It perfectly matches what's behind him. Skyline of mountains, salmonberry bush. He disappears. She's married the land. The land will stay with her. Shua tells me, it's not about you. Fine but she's in my dream. 
I develop a technique for unlocking doors one-handed, always carrying too much stuff. Ten months after my father's death, he has loosened fifty years from his frame. A doubled spruce, salt air in blasts, candles on the table, your calls, your voices, asters, house wren, a bird's flight through the banquet hall, out the other door, gust of cold. What I didn't know was closed begins to open. A small wind pushes the heart ajar. Is it this simple? In the lap of a boulder, a pool of salt water, maroon sea scars, sorry, maroon sea stars, rough skin. Mount Baker sliced by telephone lines, the Fraser Delta waterlogged, driving Highway 10 laid straight out past horses in muddy paddocks, <coughs> poles and wires, mountains in a sunbreak up the valley, golden ears to the north, draining from the Fraser's mouth a plume of brown, the shock of horsepower. In Siena, at Palio, pressed against temporary fencing, inches from steaming flanks, streaming tails, bareback riders six abreast at the top of the track, churning by, pounding into yesterday. A year of patience, a friend called it. When exhausted, do not start anything. No recriminations, no fixes. A year in the compost bin, when mud floods you, when your outlooks cut to bits. Going home with five plastic bags of chicken shit for the garden we're starting from scratch. Going home up the gravel drive beyond streetlights, municipal water, or garbage collection. Mother read Baha'i texts while smoking on the toilet. Toyota station wagons, my confessional. After little islands, the big one. I can smell the Pacific. Feel my cheek on your chest. Thank you.